Hello, everyone. Matt Clark, Research Analyst for Money and Markets here with your weekly Bull and Bear podcast. If you haven't already, uh, make sure you are signed up uh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is where you're going to find a lot of great features with Chief Investment Strategist Adam O'Dell, Green Zone Fortunes co-editor Charles Sizemore, and myself each and every week. Also, check out moneyandmarkets.com. It is your home for safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information to boost your portfolio. Uh, you can set up your own watch list of stocks. You can track their Green Zone ratings performance, and you can do it all for free at moneyandmarkets.com. Also, don't forget about our premium service, investment service, Green Zone Fortunes. This is where Adam, Charles, myself, and our entire team work very hard to give you uh, our best analysis, uh, insight, and uh, stock recommendations each and every month. Uh, and you can get, get all that all that access for less than a cup of coffee, or less than the price of a cup of coffee, rather. We'll put a link up top here, and you can find out more information on how you can uh, get involved with Green Zone Fortunes. Now, on with today's podcast, where I'm going to talk about how you can profit from, of all things, video games. And I don't mean reselling them because there's not much of a market for that. Video games are very big business. I mean, we've talked about it before, but billions are spent on consoles, computers, games, and the market is only getting bigger. A recent study by Juniper Research uh, found that global the global video game market was worth about $155.9 billion in 2020. That's projected to grow to $268.8 8 billion by 2025. That's a 72.4% expansion in just five years. Now, in the United States, consumers spent nearly $32 billion uh, on video game hardware, software, and mobile games in 2020. That's about 20% of the total global video game market. Now, let's go a little deeper. In 2021, one video game user spent an average of $171.10 on video games. And this could be on anything. This could be on software, uh, hardware, or both, uh, or even on mobile games. Now, by 2025, one video game user is expected to spend an average of $215.60. That's a 26% increase in total spend for just one user in the video game market. And the competition in the market uh, for market share here is fierce. And it just got ramped up over the course of the last few weeks. Now, the battle over the $32 billion U.S. video game industry uh, and market, uh, as well as the global market, rather, uh, just got uh, about a five-gallon tank of gasoline and a box of matches thrown on it. In the span of a little under a month, two of the biggest console developers spent nearly $75 billion to buy two of the most well-known video game creators. Microsoft Corporation announced it was acquiring Activision Blizzard for nearly $70 billion. And then a few weeks later, not to be outdone, Sony Corporation said it was spending about $3.6 billion to buy privately held Bungie Incorporated. Now, this is going to transform the video game industry. But what I want to do today is compare Microsoft and Sony and determine which one might be the better buy for your portfolio. So let's start with Microsoft. Now, the deal to buy Activision Blizzard gives Microsoft access to popular game titles like World of Warcraft, Candy Crush, Diablo, uh, Overwatch, and of course, the Call of Duty franchise. And we can't forget about the $7.5 billion deal that Microsoft entered last year to buy ZeniMax Media, which is the parent company of Bethesda. Uh, this added titles like Doom, Fallout, The Evil Within, and The Elder Scrolls to Microsoft's list. Now, these deals aren't done yet. In fact, it's going to take about two or three years for the Activision Blizzard deal to be finalized. Uh, and the deal with ZeniMax is not going to be done uh, for a little bit as well. But you, you already know that there's work behind the scenes to get things kind of aligned with Microsoft uh, with both of these companies. Now, look at the stock. Microsoft's stock started 2021 down, but then found some solid footing in May. It jumped about 44.4% to a new 52-week high in December of 2021, but then paired those gains back during the recent tech sell-off. The deal announcement with Activision Blizzard actually drove the price of the stock down slightly. Now, it's gained a bit back since then, uh, but still trades around $15 off its 50-day simple moving average. But to go a little deeper, to take a little, a little step into it a little bit, um, I want to look at its green zone rating system. And you can do all this at our website, by the way, my, uh, moneymarkets.com. Microsoft scores a 76 on our green zone rating system, which means we're bullish on the stock and expect it to outperform the broader market by at least two times over the next 12 months. With a $2.3 trillion market cap, it does get dragged down by the size factor. Uh, and it's a bit overvalued when you look at its price to sales, which is at 12.6, and its price to book ratio, which is about 14.6. However, it has strong growth with 40% one year annual earnings per share growth rates uh, and a 17.5% annual one year sales growth rate. Microsoft also has very strong returns on assets, equity, and investments, which are all double digit positives uh, and all much higher than their peers. 
Now let's flip it over and look at Sony. Its acquisition of Bungie was much less expensive than Microsoft's deal for Activision. However, Bungie doesn't bring nearly the catalog of games that Activision does. Bungie's anchored by the Destiny series uh, that remains very popular, but it's interesting to note here, uh, more ironic than anything else, that Destiny is only available on Xbox consoles, I believe, uh, which is actually only produced by Microsoft. So kind of ir ironic there uh, that uh, they would actually buy into that. But Destiny is very popular. Uh, Destiny 2 is expected to grow even more uh, than its uh, current pace right now. I could be wrong about the Destiny being only available on, on, on Xbox. I think it is, but I, I could be wrong. However, um, Bungie does only make uh, certain games that are available for only the Xbox. Now, Sony had a more solid start to 2021 in terms of its stock uh, uh, in 2021, but, micro, but, uh, but then it dipped a little bit in May, um, and, and it rebounded and gained 38.5% from its 52-week uh, low to its 52-week high set in December, and it gained that uh, from May to December, so in a much shorter time uh, than it took uh, Microsoft to go from the start of the year to its high. Uh, so it did move a little bit faster uh, to that 52-week high. Uh, the stock dropped in January, but then rebounded slightly. It trades around $7 below its 50-day simple moving average. Um, and its stock was actually more adversely impacted by Microsoft's acquisition of Activision. Uh, and then it was actually positively impacted by its own announcement to buy Bungie. Now, if you look at our Green Zone rating system, Sony actually rates higher than Microsoft in our Green Zone rating system. It scores an 81 overall, and we're, and that puts it in the strong bullish territory and means we expect it to outperform the market by three times over the next 12 months. Now, again, we're talking about uh, about a five uh, about a five point difference, but that difference could be uh, could be exponential when it comes to gains for your portfolio. The biggest difference here is that Sony is rated a much better value uh, with price to ratios either in line or actually lower than their competitors, whereas Microsoft is actually higher than its peers. Its growth is solid with 107% rather one-year annual earnings per share growth rate and a 13.3% one-year annual sales growth rate. Uh, Sony's return on assets, equity, and investment aren't nearly as strong as Microsoft's, and you really can't expect them to be, but they're all still positive and all still above their industry peers. Now, in the end here, when you look at these two stocks, there's a few things you have to consider. One, both acquisitions uh, come with announcements that both Sony and Microsoft will look to create cross-platform games. This is basically games that you can play on different consoles or PCs. They're not exclusive to either the PlayStation or the Xbox uh, or online or PC. They want to create games where you can play one game on various platforms against people of other platforms. Um, so there's no exclusivity to gameplay, which is nice, and this is a big win for gamers, uh, as they no longer really may no longer have to choose but their console based uh, on what games they want to play. They may be able to play all games on any console they choose. Now, while Sony's acquisition of Bungie uh, gives it access to fewer titles, the buy was actually really smart. They paid considerably less and picked up a company with far less baggage than Activision. If you, you can just look at the news and see all, all the baggage that's tie, tied back with Activision Blizzard and current rel, uh, revelations have been made over the last 12 months, whereas Bungie doesn't really have that problem. Uh, and, and then number three, um, I don't think this is going to be the end of the acquisition spree uh, in the gaming sector for either Microsoft or Sony. I think this is just going to be the beginning. I think we're going to see more and more maybe smaller title developers uh, bought up by both by either Microsoft or Sony as both try to position themselves in, in this gaming war. Now, in terms of one year returns, another thing to consider, Microsoft is up 29 percent. Sony is up 13 and a half percent overall. I got to give the edge to Sony here. Microsoft is a multifaceted company with a lot of different earning streams. So it isn't really reliant on, on video game, as much reliant on game, video games as Sony is. But that said, Sony's PlayStation remains one of the most popular gaming consoles on the market, especially compared to Microsoft's Xbox. Uh, during a recent call, uh, Sony's, uh, the, the PlayStation CEO actually said that the demand uh, is higher, which is why the supply is lower, not necessarily so much that, that the supply is lower. So there's actually more PlayStation 5s out there, but the demand for them is so great that it's very hard for Sony to keep up. That dominant position that Sony has, I think is going to continue for a while uh, down the road uh, and just position Sony to be even stronger in the video game sector. Now, you're not going to go wrong with either of these stocks in your portfolio, but if I had to choose right now at this moment, I would probably go with Sony. I think there's a little bit more growth potential here. Uh, plus, you have to consider size and, and, and larger cap companies don't necessarily produce those massive gains compared to their smaller counterparts. Now, while there's very little difference in size here, uh, but Microsoft is much, much bigger uh, compared 
to Sony. Ultimately, it's going to be the gamer here. That's going to be the big winner in the sweepstakes, as you can expect both Sony and Microsoft to develop online streaming or continue to develop online streaming, uh, membership services, and cross-platform games that take the pressure off gamers to either pick one console or another or to actually have to buy both to play games that they want to play, which is great news for gamers. And I think they're going to be the big winners at the end. But at the end of the day, I think Sony is a bit stronger pick right now. Uh, but again, you're not going to go wrong with either one of these uh, with either one of these stocks. Now, uh, I want to switch gears and look over at our most recent poll question on our YouTube channel. Uh, last week's question on YouTube, uh, we asked if you own any renewable energy stocks. Uh, now the Build Back Better bill has been stalled uh, in Congress. And more than half of you, right around 53%, said that you were actually still holding uh, because the market size for green energy is good, just going to keep growing in your opinion. Another 27% of you said that you, you don't have any green stocks because uh, green energy stocks are dead along with the bill. And interestingly enough, 20% of you said that you didn't own any green stocks right now, but you might use this recent dip to buy in. So if you look at all that together, it seems like there's still a lot of popularity for green zone stocks, uh, or not green zone stocks, but green stocks rather, uh, green energy stocks. Uh, and this may provide a, a good buying opportunity. Now, in addition, we also asked that if you did hold energy, green energy stocks, uh, we want to know which ones. Doug said, uh, nope, he sold his last one, which was Solar Edge, about a month ago. He got out. He saw the trend. It was it was gonna uh, it was gonna go away because uh, Build Back Better bill was not gonna pass. FC Bayern München, uh, uh, which is actually German for FC Bayern Munich, uh, added Brookfield Renewable Corporation, Clearway Energy, and Algonquin Power and Utilities. And then George added NEE. Uh, so those are the stocks they're holding. Now, uh, in the last week, renewable energy has received a bit of a shot in the arm as Congress uh, continues to weigh options of passing maybe parts of the Build Back Better bill. Uh, the Global X Renewable Energy Producers ETF, which trades under RNRG, uh, moved up actually 0.08%, which doesn't seem like a whole lot, but considering how it's been down, move, any movement up is actually good news. Uh, but it actually made that move in the last seven days, uh, but it's still down more than 8% uh, for the month. Uh, time's going to tell if, if congressional leaders are going to pull parts of the BBB, like renewable energy, out and pass them as standalones. Uh, rather than trying to pass a much a, a broader comprehensive bill as they tried to with the Build Back Better bill. Now, if you do have any questions about a particular stock, or maybe there's a sector that you would like Adam, Charles, and I to take a look at, uh, you can email us. Email us. Uh, the email address is feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. We'll put that email address right down there. Or you can also comment below on our YouTube channel. Either way, um, I've actually had questions on, on my Twitter feed as well. So you can ask anyway, uh, and we try to get you uh, get your questions answered as quickly as we can. Uh, but we love to see your feedback, uh, good, bad, and different, whether you have a question or maybe a testimonial. You've uh, followed one of our recommendations and done well. Love to see all that. Uh, so do, do email us or drop a comment below on YouTube. If we do use your question, or maybe you make a video and we use that in our video, and we're gonna send you some very cool Money and Markets gear like the shirt that I have on here, uh, maybe a sweatshirt, t-shirt, hats, whatever. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff uh, that uh, we're flowing in. So if you submit a question and we use it, we will send you some very cool Money and Markets gear. Do wanna remind you to head over to moneymarkets.com, sign up for our free daily e-letter. We give you safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information each and every day delivered to your inbox for Free. While you're there, check out our proprietary Green Zone rating system. You've seen me use it earlier in this video for both Sony and Microsoft. You can see our metrics for uh, thousands of stocks uh, on the market right now. You get the ratings of those stocks, see how we break it down with our six metrics that we use. Just go to the website uh, and type in your stock of choice in the search bar that's up in the top corner, uh, and uh, you will be able to see that. You'll see um, also the rate. You'll see the ratings of the stocks and fundamental data, uh, stock chart, and you can even add stocks to your own personal hot list that you can house on moneyandmarkets.com. And did I forget to mention that using all that is completely free for you. That's all for me this week. Until next time, this is Money Markets Research Analyst and host of the Bull the Bear uh, podcast, Matt Clark, wishing everyone safe trading.